to say that in the Bible. It doesn't say don't talk to angels. Don't worship angels. Well, you know, we talked about that yesterday. I'm not worshiping angels. I don't even want to worship angels. But I don't, you know, I don't worship my dad or Pastor Don or my wife or my mom or any other person in ministry. I don't worship them, but I'd still like to maybe have a conversation. Hey, what's the Lord doing? Right? So it should be normal for us to interact with angels. So, so, uh, and one thing about that, the Lord has never told me. He's, he gave me instruction about seeing in the spirit, you know, which I share. I haven't shared it here yet. I did last year. But uh, he never said, and by the way, don't talk to angels if you see them. Or if you see angels, make sure and look the other way. Now, you know, that's ridiculous. So I realize that this is part of our walk. This is part of the supernatural walk, just like, you know, the people that we read about in the Bible and some of the saints and the, and the people that we admire, we hear their testimonies. I, I realize this is for us, and so, but I want it. I mean, I want this. Is there anybody here that wants that? Anybody? Remember, the angels are watching. And I'm not kidding. So I would declare every day and I would pray, Father, let your angels manifest their presence and their power openly in my home, in my life, in my family, in our ministry, in our walk, in our work. Let your angels manifest their presence and their power. We give license to heaven to fully fill this place, fill our homes, fill our lives. We open every gate, every door to the kingdom of heaven, to what God's plans are. We open those doors in Jesus' name. Heaven, you are welcome in this place. Angels, you are welcome in this place. As a matter of fact, Father, if you have angels that are looking for something to do, have them come to just release your presence here, even if, if but for a moment. Let them come through. Give them an assignment to come through this place and release your glory and release your presence and maybe bring gifts if you give them gifts so they, so they can have something to do as well, so that they can be a part of what we're doing. And I pray this over and over throughout my day because if you're looking for something to become manifest, I have found that if you will continue to pursue and pursue and pursue and speak and speak and speak and declare and take steps of faith, it will manifest. And I've heard testimony after testimony from people that if you turn your face to the wall when you're seeking these things, that they will break open for you. And I've seen that over and over. So, so I'm, I was praying that, not knowing what it would look like. But my wife and I, kind of like stepping into this was an adjustment because when you first begin to experience the presence of angels, it can be pretty unsettling, you know? I think we watch too many scary movies as a kid, so when anything weird happens, it's like, oh my goodness, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, you know? Did you feel that? Yeah, my, my hairs are standing on end. What was that noise, you know, that kind of stuff. So, and I'm telling on myself, because I've watched scary movies before. If you want to, uh, don't watch scary movies as, as even as research. I've heard, had friends say, well, I just watch it to see what the enemy is. No, no, forget that. Whatsoever things are pure and clear and lovely. Believe me, when you're walking in a spiritual realm, you may have to deal with the other stuff, but you don't need to watch it as entertainment. But anyway, so I'm... I'm crying that out every day, and I'm doing it passionately because I am declaring this is going to come to pass. That's not even a question. Even if I don't understand it at this point, I'm, the Lord is leading me to declare this just like you did for your wife and daughter, and you saw a breakthrough in two hours. Come on, you know. This is a key. This is a huge key. Get passionate. Declare these things to come to pass that your eyes will be open and that you will minister and see and speak with angels face to face or with the Lord or with those of heaven that the Lord brings into your life, that this will be open to you. So I'm declaring this. My wife and I are in the basement watching TV. I think we were watching, 
What show? Well, we used to watch uh, that International House Hunters a lot because we liked all, all those exotic locations. So we're watching TV in the basement, and all of a sudden we hear a door open, and the little bell hanging on the door is ringing. So it's, oh, my goodness. No, there's no one here. No, the outside door is locked. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebu so I, the first thing I'm thinking is this is some trick of the enemy, somehow got in our house. Were you thinking that as well? Yeah, my wife was too. So, so then the next night, you know, and, and of course the next day I'm praying, Lord, let your angels manifest their presence openly in our home. And then, of course, <laughs> and then the door opens, the bell rings. You know, you hear footsteps. And, you're, and, and right away, I run to the foot stairs, and I rebuke you in Jesus' name. This went on for like, I don't know, probably 10 days or two weeks. And fi <laughs> I should have called you. So, so one day, this happened. And so I run to the steps, and I start to speak. And an angel speaks to me. I didn't see him, but I heard his voice. He said, Mike, you have to make up your mind. Either you want us to manifest our presence or you don't. So what does that tell me? Um, of course, I felt like a fool, but in a nice way because I was happy at the outcome. But that told me something, that this declaration of declaring this passionately, that this is what was going to happen. I was given heaven permission to come, and I was declaring that it was done over and over and over. And, you know, then the angels began to manifest their presence openly. I mean, and crazy stuff started happening because... We were not only just making room for what we wanted. We were declaring it. We were looking for it. We were pressing in for it as a passionate pursuit that this isn't just, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be great if we could all see angels? No, no, no. This, this, this is a deeper thing. But once you get that breakthrough, then it's like an avalanche. The door opens. It's like I tell people when you're seeing in the spirit realm. You know, people, oh, I'd like to see this. I'd like to see that. Seeing in the spirit is not like turning on a TV set. It's like stepping through a doorway. Because once your eyes are open, you are in it. You know, you might see the angel, but maybe he's got a word for you. Now he's coming towards you and he's going to speak to you. So that's, that's what happens. That's the dynamic when your eyes begin to open. And I'll talk more about opening your eyes tomorrow. And also, I want to share some translation testimonies with you. Because... All of this is very organic. Once you start declaring and decreeing and stepping and taking those prophetic steps and making sure, just like even when you come to meetings like this, this is a time of preparation. Heaven is in, has poured out upon this meeting. Uh, this has been, uh, I mean, everyone. You can feel the angelic presence in the place. You feel the presence of heaven. You know stuff is going on. People are seeing things move, and it's like, oh, my goodness, look at this atmosphere. It's so thick. Heaven is involved. They're doing this. And it's not for no reason that God has given you the experiences and shown you he is doing this work. So we just got to really come on board with it and start declaring it and looking for it and looking for it. That's another key. You want to see the supernatural? You want to see the spiritual realm? You actively look for it. It's, it's like in the natural realm, we do not go through life with our eyes closed. We don't not walk around with our eyes closed because we wouldn't see anything. It's the same in the spiritual realm. At first, you have to do it in your imagination. But, but after a while then a shift happens because you're, you're telling your spirit, man, engage, engage, engage. And you do that with your imagination. You'll go somewhere, you'll walk into the room, and you think, okay, where are the angels in this room? Why not? You know, you're here anyway. Okay, well, uh, all right, I see a couple angels over here. And in my imagination, one over there by the door, one here, one there. Maybe when, during worship, the Lord comes in. And then you, you think it's your imagination, but at some point you realize, oh, my goodness, I'm really seeing this. 
And then you're not instigating it. You're not, you're not um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're not initiating it. You just realize that, um, you know, the screen is suddenly an image has come up and you're realizing that it's really, you're seeing it. And then your spiritual eyes begin to engage more and open more. And you have a greater awareness that this is going on. But at once we began to declare what we wanted to see come to pass, and we began to take little steps of faith, like in stillness and in prayer and, and just really being passionate for what God was doing and declaring that it could happen in our home. It began to happen in our home. And even unbelievers have seen angels in our house. You know, even people that don't believe in it have been covered in gold dust when they come into our house. My wife's customers at work. Can I, can I talk about this a little bit? Is that all right? She has customers at work. She prays for them, and the presence of the Lord comes upon them. And uh, they get covered. I mean, people that don't even believe, they've got gold all over the face, men and women. And uh, they don't have a grid for it. But it shows me that God is honoring what you want to see happen, that he will honor that and he'll bring it to pass. We've had, and you talk about, okay, so the, the angel spoke to me and said, make up your mind. And so I realized, okay, I've got to stop rebuking them. It's, I'm becoming a laughing stock in heaven, rebuking angels. But so, so I, 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 the Lord corrected me, and I, I got more on, on board with it. And then it just began to come off the charts. Because uh, it's not like I stopped asking now. Because, no, I mean, uh, now I realize that they're going to do it, right? They are going to manifest their presence, just like I've been declaring. They just told me, make up your mind. Okay, I made up my mind. Yes, I still want this. So come on, do it more, do it more. And uh, so that it began to happen all throughout the house. Um, just uh, situation after situation, you open up your eyes one night and you see the angels standing in the room or you see orbs of light floating around the house all the time. And uh, then your kids start seeing them. And it's like heaven opens to you. And then what happens next? Then you start seeing angels in the flesh that come and talk to you, or it appears that they're in the flesh, because, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell. Even in yourself, you know, when Paul says, in the body or out of the body, I don't know. I don't think he was so much confused as he was maybe giving us an instruction that you can't tell sometimes. You think you're in the flesh, but you're in the spirit, and you're still interacting with people, and you're still touching them, and you're still able to take a drink of water or eat a sandwich. And then you realize, oh, my goodness, I was in the spirit the whole time. And it's strange. Or vice versa, you know. So these things, you begin to adjust to that, and it begins to increase. But you don't stop. You don't stop declaring, and you don't stop decreeing, and you don't stop talking about who you are in Christ, and you don't stop sharing the miracles. You allow this to be an unfolding thing and you ask for increase okay now you've shown us now give us greater i was um those of you who have read my books probably know some of my stories let, let me i'll tell you a great one this is a great one gordana she's been she's been going in the spirit since 2011 and ministering and there's always there's two angels that show up in our house just about every day one is bigger than the other, and sometimes you can see them as a form. Sometimes they look like uh, balls of light. And, uh, you know, I was kind of freaked out when Gordana used to get swept into the spiritual realm. I didn't have a grid for it. I mean, I heard, you know, I heard Heidi Baker talk about it. And when, when she was said for eight days, she just, you know, shook and vibrated, and she couldn't talk, and she couldn't. And so I thought, well, you know, yeah, that's... That's great. That's Heidi Baker, you know, but when it happens in your own home and you think, oh, my goodness, what is this, you know? And uh, so I was telling, so Gordana, she gets swept into the spirit and she's praying and she's speaking other languages. And it's like, what is going on? So I'm getting a little bit aggravated. 
because I'm thinking, I'm her husband. I should, Lord, give me some revelation. So one day, she's swept into the spirit. It's at night. She's laying on the bed. And I know God's doing something. And so I just went into the bedroom and I declared, Hey, you show yourself to me right now. I said, I'm her husband and I, and I have a right to know. <laughs> so, so it was really funny because our dog was, was on the floor. And all of a sudden, this brilliant flash of blue light, just like lightning, filled the room and totally freaked me out, freaked out the dog. The dog jumped in bed and, like, cuddled up against me. And uh, they, didn't manif- they didn't show me who they were, but the Lord taught me something about that, too. He said, you have to honor what I'm doing. You know, you, I'm not going to open your eyes to this if you don't honor what I'm doing. Even if you don't understand it, you know it's me. Honor it. And then the Lord later showed me that during those times when Gordana has taken an inter- intercession, that if I would also intercede, that we could be in agreement, and then I would be a part of what he was doing. And it's very powerful. But it starts with honor. You know, when you honor the things God does, you don't rebuke them. But you look for the increase. So God began to just do more of that. And I think I took a rabbit trail when I was going to what I was going to actually say about you. I'm sorry? <laughs> but, you know, but God began to, to do this in our home like as an ongoing thing with the miraculous happening because that's what we were looking for in every day. And I mean every day. I start out my day. You know, people say, how, does this ha- how did this happen for you? I start out my day declaring the impossible to happen. And it seems like a lot of work. You, th- you, th- you know, it seems like a lot of work to lay your hands on your car every morning and say, I'm believing supernatural translation. I want to be translated to the places I go. How ridiculous is that, right? It happens. It's happened to me. It's happened to my dad several times, and he wasn't even asking for it. it happened to my sister. So... Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to take ridiculous steps of faith that every morning you go out and you, and you lay your hands on your car and say, in Jesus' name, you will supernaturally translate me. to," And you, and you just say it. Because the words that we speak are powerful. And, and like, just like the thing with my, my wife and my daughter shopping, just like the thing with uh, telling heaven, come and manifest in my home, those things began to come to pass because I was not backing down from it. I was declaring with even greater intensity that I will have this because I know it's not me trying to convince God. He has freely given me. It's, what it is is it's getting all the junk out of the way. You're declaring it to come to pass. There might be some steps in the meantime that the Lord has to make happen, but now you're saying, yes, this is going to happen. So it happens. So, okay, I got a couple more minutes, right? <laughs> okay. So my, my passion for you is that, because uh, I know, just like me, you want breakthrough. You want to walk in the greater things, and you want, you want to know how that happens. And, it's, and it sounds too ridiculous. It sounds so ridiculous when I tell you, just like the stillness thing, you think, okay, well, yeah, I know how to be still. No, no, I mean really become a master at becoming in, coming into stillness. I mean really take hold of that. If you want to walk in the spiritual realm, you have to walk in the spiritual realm. You have to realize it's not going to be you're going to sing this song, read that verse, you know, dance around the room, and suddenly you're gonna, it's going to happen. It's going to be we are taking steps of faith in the spiritual realm, making ourselves available to that realm to do, to do those things. It's, it's a conscious decision that does not look natural in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's, it's looking. Let, let me give you a key. Let me leave you with a key. I know you have a passion. 
I know some of you, I've talked to a lot of you that uh, have had a lot of experiences and you want that next breakthrough. So let me give you something that's going to provide a, a, a fairly quick breakthrough for you. Providing your heart's in the right place, and this is all about Jesus, because if it's not, then uh, you probably, probably will be wasting your time. One thing that I learned, even uh, almost as great as, as uh, looking with my eyes closed, and I've talked about that before, but if you want to see in the spiritual dimension, you want to begin to interact. In times when you don't have much light, like you're getting ready for bed or you first wake up in the morning, dusk, dawn type situations. If you lay very still with your eyes open and just survey the atmosphere or be aware of the atmosphere, keep your eyes open even though it's dark. Your eyes adjust somewhat. Because your physical eyes cannot really adjust to anything physical around you, the fact that you keep looking causes your spiritual eyes to engage. That's what I've seen that over and over. And sometimes it even freaks people out because they don't realize how, how quick that can happen. So you're in a dark room. Your eyes have somewhat adjusted, but there's still no, not enough light to see anything. And you keep your eyes open, and you be aware. And you will see movement to your left and to your right. You know, don't jerk your head around and try and look in the natural, because the minute you see something and you, like, turn quickly to see what it is, then a shift happens again, and your spiritual eyes begin to close, and your physical eyes are now engaged. So I've learned that even during the daytime. If I see things in the spirit, if I just be, be aware of it and, and slowly turn into it, then I can continue to see it. But if I jerk my head around and whip around, my physical eyes want to take over. So I'm telling you that as you are looking in these times of not, not quite dark but not light enough to see, you will see movement in the spirit realm. Your eyes will open and you will see. I'm not saying you'll have an understanding for it, because a lot of things I never had understanding for. And the Lord will have to bring that. But he, he will bring understanding, but maybe not the way you want it or the timing you want it. But you'll begin to see. And you'll see shifts in the atmosphere. You'll see little flashes of light. You'll see... Uh, colors moving and it will make absolutely no sense and you'll think well what has this got to do with the gospel it's not about it's not about um, the gospel per se it's about walking in what you've been given learning to open your spiritual eyes it's just like you know I could tell you open your physical eyes and you say why what has that got to do with the gospel well, it does have a lot to do with it because now you can see to go talk to people or whatever. So we have to realize from a practical standpoint that what we're doing is we're training ourselves to see in the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit and to go in the Spirit. So as a practical measure, I would encourage you to do that, to spend time. And when I would do this, I would do it for hours, and I would see breakthrough. But I've seen, I've had people uh, told people this and the, and it happens you know fairly quickly and it sometimes it, it even freaks you out because you you realize there's a lot going on that you didn't see but uh, and don't pay too much attention to it just be aware and just watch it okay as you watch things happen around you just realize that the lord has you in the palm of his hand he's he's protecting you he's leading you in this journey you don't have to be afraid. Just continue to trust him and thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes. And you watch what happens. And what I began to notice as I would do this, then, I, then things would become clearer. And then you suddenly you see what you know just looks like a color. But now after two weeks, you realize that's an angel. He's always standing in the same place. And then once you get greater clarity, then you can see that even the expression on his face when he's standing there, but it all starts with baby steps. That's why, you know, I talk about baby steps. You want to you wanna walk in the supernatural realms. You want those amazing testimonies that you hear from people. You want to walk in that. I'm telling you, do not 
um, be opposed to taking baby steps. Because if you master something simple, then it opens up everything. The Lord did not make this um, so that people can't do it. He made it so people can do it. And when the Lord was talking to me about seeing in the Spirit, all the instructions he gave me were very simple and very positive that we should do this and that we should be aware and that we should tear down veils. And if we will do, take these little steps of faith, then it opens up this dimension to us. And it's for, a, for so many reasons I, could, I couldn't list them all, but for walking in the kingdom is one powerful reason. Now, can I share just one translation testimony with you guys? Um, oh, no, I wanted to talk about Gordana. Okay, I'm going to tell about this situation. So I told you about the angels that show up. I promise it's worth it. Just hang with me just for a minute. So we minister in the Philippines. Gordana, I, and I just honor my wife for her relationship with the Lord. She provokes me to jealousy. She, she guards over me like, like a Rottweiler. She said, Michael, what are you watching on TV? It's just a sports show, honey. Okay, guard your eyes. I said, I know. I know, I wrote that in the book, remember? So, but, you know, but we were in the Philippines ministering. Powerful miracles happened. She was praying with Rushma Allen, Bruce Allen's wife. And they prayed for hours for people. And it was just totally Holy Spirit. Healings happened and miracles. And, and so, on, and we were fortunate enough that the Lord gave us uh, the tickets that we got to sit together on our journey. Except for the journey home, the long flight, like 12 hours, um, the main part of the, light, the flight was... Um, she was, we were sitting in the middle section, you know, in those wide body planes. You've got the left, the right, and the middle. So in the middle section, I think there were three chairs, and I was sitting directly behind her. So I thought, well, because it was a full flight. I thought, well, I couldn't sit next to her, but at least I'm right behind her. So the plane is full, except for Gordana's row. She's got an empty chair to her left and an empty chair to her right. And so um, it stays like that for quite a while. And then the flight attendants have closed all the baggage stuff and we're getting ready to leave. And then all of a sudden, these two men come walking down, one down the left aisle, one down the right. And so I'm watching these guys and they're walking down the aisle and they both sit down next to Gordana on Gordana's left and her right. So I'm, I'm watching these guys, and they look like nice enough guys. They were probably each about six foot five. The guy on the right was a little bit bigger. The guy on the left had longer hair, and he looked like just a normal build. The guy on the right, uh, he looked like, I, I don't know, like an athlete. He had very muscular, very intense look on his face, short hair. And uh, so I'm just watching Gordana interact, especially with the guy on the left. He just seemed very pleasant, and so I'm thinking, oh, that's nice. You know, every once in a while, I tap Gordana on the, on the shoulder. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. We're just visiting. So, I, so I'm just watching, and, she's, and I'm thinking to myself, it sure is nice that, that, you know, the Lord gave Gordana some nice people to sit with so she, on this long flight, she can visit with somebody. And uh, so I'm, a little bit later, I'm watching again, and I'm looking at her visiting with the guy on the left, and... And so I just said, Lord, that's so nice that uh, you gave her some nice people to sit with. And then the Lord speaks to me, and he said, they asked to sit with her. And I thought, what? He said, yeah, they asked to sit with her. He said, the one on the left is healing. The one on the right is breakthrough. And I thought, oh, my goodness. And I just, I just, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that that was accurate. And so now I'm thinking, you know, I wonder if I can like butt into this situation. I want to talk to them too, you know? So then I, I, but I felt a check not to do that, not to ruin her, her fellowship she was having. 
they asked to sit with her, not with me. So again, yeah. So, you know, and so I, I was just totally blessed beyond words. And I, I was just thinking, how great is it that even the angels that work with you want to be around you, want to sit with you, want to, want to work with you, want to be that interactive with you, right? So, so we get off the plane and Gordana turns to me and she said, you will never guess what happened. And I said, yes, I will. And she said, uh, and I said, those men with you were not men, they were angels. And she said, yes, the one on the left was a healing. The one on the right was breakthrough. And I said, I know that the Lord told me. (laughs) But, you know, and that's and I'm finding out that that is not so unusual that God does things like that. But it's just making ourselves aware and allowing heaven to do this and taking little steps of faith to see it come to pass with a great passion and declaring that these things will be manifest in your life and they will be manifest in your life. Every, well, I can't say every angel. Some of them are very um, serious and they just have their job and they're, they don't interact for some reason. I guess they just, they're just they focused on what they're doing. But a lot of the angels around your life that are assigned to your ministry and your family, they are more than happy to interact with us and to tell us about what they're doing, what their ministry is, when they were assigned to you. And, and that is, that's normal for them. They are, it's not like they're hiding from us. The fact that we want that interaction, that's perfectly great with them because they want it too. And they they get excited for what God's doing. And they will tell you, we are so excited for what God's doing with you. They've told us that many times. And this should be normal life for us. And it will be normal life for us because this is what God is doing in this hour. And we're not here for no reason. And, and you think, well, you know, maybe it's just for the, for the few people that we always hear about. No, it's for us, too. God is doing this for us, too, because, you know, you can't have those 12 people. They're not going to evangelize the planet. Everybody has a part to play, and we can all walk in that supernatural walk with God. So let me just pray for you. And then I promise tomorrow I'm going to give you some more concrete steps to take. But you have to do the steps. You do the steps, you're going to get the breakthrough, I'm telling you. I mean, that's what the Lord taught me. I did it. It happened. I've seen it over and over and over, people that have been looking for breakthrough for years, that just if they stick with it and do what I'm telling you, it happens for them. So let me pray for you guys. Father, in Jesus' name, I just release, I just release to my brothers and sisters now everything you've given me. I release it with all my heart, Father. I just give this to them. Every lesson, every vision, every visitation, every angelic encounter, Father, let them have double what you've given me. Father, launch them into this the way that you launched me, but even greater, with greater force, with greater speed, with greater clarity. Father, bring this to them. And I just command the obstructions to fall. I command the veils and scales to fall. I command the work of the enemy to be destroyed and removed. Father, let them move from glory to glory and let it be a glorious experience. Let them work with their angels face to face. I prophesy, I decree that the angels around your life manifest their presence openly in your life, in your home, in your work, in your ministry. I just release this now in Jesus' name, that the blessings of God be poured out upon you, the doors open to you, heavenly doors open to you, provision is poured out upon you like never before. I just release upon you miracles, signs, and wonders that they be manifest more than ever before, convincing signs of God's presence. I just release this now that people cannot deny that the power of God and the presence of God is here and it's real, convincing signs of God's presence, convincing signs. I just release this now by faith in Jesus' name. Father, just like you've done in our home, just like you've done in our lives, I release that here upon these people. And I ask you, Father, to, 
that from this moment forward, that even increase begins now. Increase that even began uh, yesterday. Let it become even greater. And launch them into this, Father, with dreams and visions. And let this become normal life, Father, like right now, and give them a passion. And Holy Spirit, lead them so that they're not spinning their wheels. And give them confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation. And I just, I just release this to them right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have to remember to bring water up with me next time. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to go. Receive that by faith. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Father. We receive it, Lord. We thank you for it. I decree, Lord, that I will walk in the greater levels of supernatural authority and power. I will see greater manifestations of your glory. We decree, Father, for signs, wonders, and miracles to be in our midst continually. That we will have a normal, supernatural lifestyle all the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord said if we would ask, Lord, that you would show us great and mighty things that we know not of. Teach us, Lord. I love that. It's using your spiritual eyes to look around. It's really cool. You can look backwards behind you. <laughs> you don't have to turn your head. Whoo. Thank you, Father. Wow. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Yep, it's time to go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you breathe upon this word. That it becomes a reality. It's real, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Wow. Well, it'll be here in the morning. <laughs> I know. I don't even know what time it is. I'm, I know it's late, so we're going to just dismiss you. We start at 11. Of all of this, tomorrow morning is the one I've been most excited about from the very beginning because <laughs> it's the ladies. And so I believe there's going to be a more caught than taught in the morning. It's going to be great impartation time. So ah, he's going to give you what you've been asking for. So come prepared to receive. Woo. I'm just going to be ooey gooey, thick and chewy tomorrow morning. Enjoy, okay? Amen. <laughs> I've never said that before.